Welcome back, fellow travelers. I want to talk to you today about the hiring process at Emirates, what it entails, and what to expect. So for context, I applied for a job for Emirates in Dubai back in March 2016, and I just want to go through my, my whole experience and what happened uh, you know, during the whole interview process. In case this is something that you're looking either to do or maybe you have an interview coming up with them and you kind of want to get a lay of the land on what to expect, this is the video for you. So I had applied, it was a base position, so it was uh, corporate, it wasn't like a flight attendant, it wasn't for uh, you know maintenance, engineering, uh, anything that's really of the sort, it's really the office environment. So this might be different if you're looking for that type of, of flight. I know that, uh, not flight, if you're looking for that type of job. <laughs> So started out, I applied for the process, uh, you know, simple, sent off my, my resume on the website. I, I had a job in mind that I applied for, and then I went with that from there. So about a week and a half after the posting closes, I get a call, uh, you know, from somebody at HR. We go through the room entry process of, of you know, a, a normal preliminary interview where they're just asking you the basic questions. From there, uh, I had another phone interview with the hiring manager. And then from there, uh, I had moved forward and gone ahead and secured an in-person interview. Now, because this is a job for Emirates, they fly you out, <laughs> which is nice, uh, to Dubai to do this process. So I got flown out. I was, again, at the time living in Toronto. So there, thankfully, there was a Toronto-Dubai flight that was direct. Got on that flight. Sat in business class, which was nice. I don't, I don't, wouldn't say expect business class, and I would imagine that if you're flying from somewhere that doesn't have immediate access uh, to Dubai, so if it's not, you know, a direct flight, I don't know if they're gonna pay for the flight, the connector flight, or if you have to find your own way. That I'm not too sure of, but they do provide accommodations once you get to Dubai. Uh, they gave me three days in Dubai, so I arrived the first day, had the interview the second day, and on the third day I left. So one of the things that I had really noticed about this whole process was when I got to Dubai, uh, I was met with somebody at the airport. Uh, they got me a, a shuttle. They had all my credentials ready for me to pass through customs. Uh, I passed through with an Emirates agent and then went out. It was nice and easy. Told the customs people why I was in Dubai. And then from there, I was able to, you know, just go to my hotel, relax. Uh, the hotel that they put you up in is fairly close to the uh, head office so you could either take the shuttle that leaves out of the, the the hotel or you can actually walk if you wanted to walk i wouldn't recommend it because i was there again in march it wasn't the heat of summer and holy cow is it hot in dubai so hot that i even mispronounced the word hot for a second <laughs> so i i got to the the interview location and the complex for for emirates is huge as you can imagine they're a wealthy airline and they sit you into the HR hiring area, so you check in, they, they tell you, you know, they give you a number and a bunch of other stuff. So you wait in this large waiting room with uh, a bunch of other people applying for a bunch of different jobs. Uh, in this case, most of the room was uh, looked like hiring for ramp crew or groomers. So uh, there were a lot of people there that, you know, were not necessarily dressed up. I think most people were wearing like this as their... Um, as their attire to go to for those jobs. The ones that were applying for professional jobs, the ones that were working in the offices, were dressed in a suit. Proper, you know, like business attire. So that's one thing to keep in mind, dress for the business. <laughs> don't don't come to an interview wearing this. Uh, it's, it's for sure not gonna fly. So after, you know, you get there, I got there, I think it was like half an hour early. I wanted to make sure I was gonna get there and find the place. Uh, they sit you down in a separate room where they have you do a standardized test and then they have you do a test that is in relation to your job. Now, this could obviously vary depending on the hiring manager. It's my understanding that the hiring manager wanted this little test that I was doing as kind of a, a an extra backstory as to your experience and to prove your experience. But not only that, it was one thing to build it out. And then in my interview, I had to explain my choices and then I had to explain uh, the campaign that I had created and why I had created it, what was the purpose, what was the benefit, all those types of things to really prove myself. I then um, had to talk, so in that hiring process room was uh, a colleague I would have been working with, my hiring manager and somebody from HR. I gotta say, through the whole process, the, uh, the HR person, my hiring manager, 
and the person that I would have been working with were all tremendous. They, they were a real joy to talk to and I actually enjoyed the interview. We had really good dialogue back and forth. It also helps that um, the person that would have been my manager, uh, we had a connection uh, that stemmed from him being from Canada. So we, we did have a bit of joking back and forth, which always helps during the interview process. Now, after this, this whole thing, it took about, I'd say half an hour of my time, maybe an hour tops. I was done the interview process. I felt really confident. I, I thought I knocked it out of the park. Uh, one thing that they were really looking for there was integrity. Uh, the person that, that they wanted to hire, and from the sense that I got from HR, is that they want to hire people with integrity, not just business experience, but people that really demonstrate good values, uh, that they, are, they can live in Dubai. So Dubai does have its set of rules and regulations that you have to follow, and that was one of the things they also made abundantly clear is you are living in this country, you have to obey these rules. Is this something that you are okay with? So they really look for people, not just who might advance their business, but for somebody who can also live the lifestyle in Dubai. I was more than up for it. I, I was thrilled at the prospect of, of moving to Dubai. So I was told that I would hear back from HR in, in the coming weeks, uh, depending on if I was chosen for the job. So I, spent the next day and a half in Dubai just seeing sights and sounds and then I took off back home. When I got back home about three days later, I ended up getting a call from HR, you know, thanking me for coming all the way out and also offering me the job. I was over the moon. Now here is where the next part is important. <laughs> I had to decline the offer. I absolutely wanted to go to Dubai. I absolutely wanted to work for Emirates. I still view Emirates as like one of the premier airlines and it would have definitely been quite an honor to be quite frank to work for this airline. So why did I have to decline? Well, if you are a, a contract employee and I would have been on contract for one year, but it was made known that with the intention of just being made permanent afterwards. And to be completely frank, I agree with this process. If I would ever be a hiring manager in a situation, I think I would go with a one-year contract, like bar, bar no real uh, deviation from that because it gives you a good idea of getting the sense of type of person that you'd be hiring. You know, a lot of people interview well or they're really good for their probation period, but as soon as the probation period's over, they kind of just like do their own thing. They feel secure, they feel safe. With a one-year contract, you kind of really understand what you're getting from a person. And if that person is really good, great, you hire them on permanent, no harm, no foul. And if they are bad, you only have them here for a year, better than being stuck with them for 5, 10, 20 years, who knows how long. So while I was okay with getting a contract, my understanding through the whole process was that I would have had my accommodations paid for. So I had negotiated a salary based on that. They gave me the salary that I wanted, but, and this is, I'll be honest, I'm partly to blame because I did not clarify it because I knew that they, they paid for accommodations. Well, they don't pay for accommodations for contract employees. So I found that out at the end of the process when we were negotiating salary and really nothing could have been done there. I, I I tried to negotiate maybe more salary to offset it, but it was company policy where they could not provide me with accommodation. And I, I kind of understand that if you're doing a contract employee, the additional costs do add up. If I would have been hired permanent from the get-go, I would have been able to go. Now you might be saying, well, what's the big deal? The, the I had no problem, I pay my own place here, right? The, the main problem is that in Dubai, I was finding that most of the people require a deposit of either the full year in advance or half the year and you can pay the other half later. At least for places that I was looking at. I, I was very particular about where I was going to live and the conditions in which I was going to live in. Needless to say, I did not have close to $60,000, $70,000 to pay for rent up front or even half. I didn't have the savings needed to really dump into temporary housing. I, I looked, I tried, I tried to angle myself in certain ways, but at the end of the day, what would have happened was that I would have had to liquidate all the money that I had in my bank accounts just to pay uh, a, a fraction of what I would have been able to, to have a location to stay in. Now, Emirates did offer to put me up in a hotel temporarily while I could find something, 
but I was really uncomfortable with that situation going into a spot where I would still have to get rid of all my funds and find different ways to make up the difference to be able to afford the down payment for an apartment. And that's one of the things is that apartments and temporary housing in Dubai have recently soared. It used to be a source for cheap rent. That is not the case anymore. And I kind of understand why landlords, at least reputable ones, want to do a year or half year payments because you have, it's a city of migrant workers. So you have a lot of people that come in and out of the city and people just ditch their apartment all of a sudden leaving the landlords to foot the bill. So that's not really that fair to them. I get it. I get it. It's just, it didn't work out for me. So I begrudgingly, I had to tell my, my hiring manager, like, look, I really want to work for you guys. I just can't under these conditions because of this reason. I never heard back from him. He never said, okay, sorry to hear it. He kind of communication just ended. And I assume they went with somebody else. Uh, I kind of, again, I understand their situation. I always kind of felt bad because I felt like I wasted their time by not, I didn't ask the right question. I, I did ask a lot of other questions where I felt comfortable jumping into that situation in Dubai for a year, maybe longer. The intention was definitely to stay there as, as long as I felt comfortable. But at the end of the day, it did not work out because of that reason. So let's go back. Why do I think I got the job? Uh, I think mainly a lot of it had to do with my experience lined up. I did have previous airline experience. Uh, I had a marketing experience. I had a lot of, I, I was a senior level asset to the company going in on a, it wasn't a, it wasn't a junior position by any stretch of the imagination, but it wasn't senior level either. I kind of like, I was staying the same, but definitely the, the pay increase was, was interesting, but the opportunity of working for Emirates and during the whole interview process, I, I made sure to make, stay true to myself. I sold myself on my strength, but I also, uh, stressed that I am somebody who, that I live within a certain set of values and those values happen to line up with uh, what they were looking for at Emirates. And a lot of that has to do, as I mentioned, with integrity, um, trying to move businesses forward, making sure that you can adapt to new environments. That's one of the things that I find is one of my strengths. And definitely they want somebody who will move to Dubai and not disappear after three months because they can't handle it. So it comes more down, much more down to the person. And if that person has the relevant skills, that's what they are looking for in this situation. And my understanding is that that's one of the core values at Emirates. So that's something to think about. Uh, I would love to know if you had applied to Emirates, if you've done an interview there. If you have any other tips for anybody that might be watching this video, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And if you'd like to check out some of my other videos, you could do that right there. And if you'd like to subscribe, you could do that right there. It really helps the channel out and uh, it lets you know when we upload new content. Till next time, safe travels.